We've all had that one guy in our lobbies who plays so bad that you ask yourself, how did they even level to 70, then somehow make it to 2100? When this happens, it truly feels like you're climbing through MMR hell. Get combat. Get combat again. Get combat. Get combat. Oh! 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 Do you tie your shoes in the morning? But here's the thing, you might hate having the worst player in your group, but in reality, it's actually the best thing you can hope for. Please, just press the wall, dude, please. Uh, uh. The spider's done, you can port, 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 wall, 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 wall. Well, as long as you know how to play around them. Today, we will explain why you actually want the worst player on your team, because these moments are the most vital on your solo shuffle journey. But first, if you want to make sure you are never the worst player in your lobby, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Our class courses are designed alongside some of the best players WoW has to offer, and teach you rank 1 level fundamentals, like how to deal maximum damage and become a live lord. All of our guides are backed by guarantee that you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So if you don't want to be left behind, Behind, check out skillcap.com today. Anyway, back to the video. First of all, you need to know how to identify the worst player in your lobby, and this requires a skill check. During the first two rounds, you're going to look for specific clues to single out the weakest links. Your goal is to go Terminator mode and start downloading information on as many players as possible on both teams. Of course, this might seem a bit tedious, but this information is vital, since you will be using this to your advantage later on. There are some obvious clues when it comes to identifying a potential weak player in your lobby, like noticing this Rhett Paladin here, who's about to backpedal all game, but that's not what we're looking for. Instead, we need to look for more important things, like how every player is using their cooldowns. For instance, our Paladin here is about to trinket a dispellable cap stun without any CC on their healer. And if that wasn't bad enough, they even bubble the follow-up AoE fear. So in just under 30 seconds of the game starting, this paladin has now used two major defensive CDs for absolutely no reason. As a healer, you need to be downloading this information too. Let's rewind a bit to see what Venruki noticed at the start of this game, and if you're a good player, you should have instantly seen this too. Okay, let's pause here. We are 6 seconds into round 1, and our team just opened with a kidney shot on the warlock, and without any hesitation, they are going to trinket and then immediately use dark pack followed up by Unending Resolve, which means not only did they trinket the first stun of the game, but then they used two defensives that can also be used while stunned. We've now downloaded the information that this player uses their defensives recklessly, which means that anytime they are on the enemy team, they are going to be a good kill target. And of course, the skill check phase also applies to enemy healers. Not only should you be paying attention to how they trinket and use defensives, but you should also monitor how well they react to your setups. Here, for instance, Big Max will know from the first round that this priest will try and death his traps, which isn't a perfect indication of being a good player, but gives us some vital information that we can use later on. There are multiple things you can look for during your skill check, and many are class specific. But generally speaking, you should be monitoring how efficiently each player trades their cooldowns, since cooldown trading is arguably the most important. At this point though, you might be asking, why would anyone want the worst player on their team? The answer is simple. As a damage dealer, you are going to have at least two lobbies with the weakest DPS, and as a healer, you will have three. When they are on the enemy team, you will have a much higher chance at winning, and this means if you can win at least one match with the worst player in the lobby, then you are in a much better position to go positive overall. So, how do you play around the worst player? Well, it's going to require you to do a bit of carrying. First of all, one huge warning. You can't rely on helping anyone out by typing in chat. Unless you are calling targets, there is a pretty high chance that anything you say will be completely ignored. And that should be the first assumption you make in any lobby, that no matter what you say or what you do, you will inevitably have to deal with stubborn people. If you feel like someone is griefing on your team, chances are they are griefing on the enemy team too. With that in mind, the first thing you can try to control is target selection. If you watched our guide on solo shuffle targeting, you already know that there are some rules for choosing who to hit. With that in mind, you can try and call out a target for the weakest player, but again, we should assume that they won't listen. If either one of you is a dot based spec, this isn't that big of a deal since you will typically be cleaving no matter what, but instead, if you both have single target damage profiles, you should focus on hitting the same target as your partner, even if they are hitting the completely wrong target. For many people, this might seem obvious, but it is super important to remember. It is better to have two people attacking the wrong target than splitting damage entirely. Instead of getting frustrated that your partner is inting, it's up to you to play around them. If you've played any other solo queue games, you already know that it is better to play around a bad teammate's mistakes rather than expect them to miraculously do the right thing. And remember, if they are griefing on your team, chances are they are doing the same on the enemy team as well. The next thing you should try and control is, well, 
crowd control. If you're playing any setup based spec with a breakable CC, you know how annoying it is to wait for DRs to reset and get a picture perfect setup only to have your CC break immediately to your partner's damage. This is obviously frustrating, and this can be even worse if on top of breaking your CC, they ignore your DRs in the first place, like this Demon Hunter pressing in cap with 0.5 seconds left on the DR of Freezing Trap. Again, you might be thinking that your partner is just inting, but more often than not, they probably just don't know the DRs of your spells. In any case, there are a few things you can do to play around both of these problems. This might sound crazy, but the first thing you can do is wait until your partner is CC'd before you initiate any major CC chain on the enemy healer. That way, there is almost zero chance that they will be able to break your CC. The second thing you could do is try and be a bit more flexible for how you sequence your CC chain. If you play a hunter, for instance, you could scatter before freezing trap. Even though they share DRs, this means you aren't putting all of your eggs in one basket and instead playing mind games with the enemy healer who probably won't trinket the DR to CC. Finally, you need to be able to carry the weakest player defensively, since chances are they will be bullied every game. As a healer, this is your time to shine, and even though your job might already be tough, you also need to be skill checking during the first two rounds just like anyone else. Remember our backpedaling Rhett Paladin from before, the one who burned Trinket and Bubble in the first few seconds of the game? You should have noticed that too. This is one of the players you will encounter, the types that will want to use every cooldown instantly regardless of if it's even needed. And if that's the case, then you should immediately pick up on this and assume that this player will aggressively trade their defensives early into the game and this means it is up to you to save them on any future goes. The best way to track this information is with Omni CD, which is essential for anyone in Solo Shuffle, especially healers, so be sure to check out our add-ons guide to properly set it up. Even as a DPS, you might need to adjust your playstyle to play around weaker partners. As a mage, obviously you want to use Dragon's Breath to CC the enemy healer, but if you're playing with inexperienced partners, you might need to save DB in order to peel. The same is true for any form of crowd control, especially stuns. You might need to deviate a bit from what you consider correct and be willing to use your CC in order to keep your partner alive in dire situations. These on-the-fly adjustments are one of the many things covered in our Solo Shuffle commentaries, where Rank 1 players guide you step-by-step -step through the most difficult lobbies imaginable and teach you the winning strategies. When you combine this with our CC and defensive play guides, you can be sure to have more than enough to start climbing the ranks, which is why we guarantee that you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our guides. Get started today by visiting the links below. But for now, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know what topics you would like us to cover next in the comments below. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.